Greetings, everyone. We are continuing uh, Search for a Nonviolent Future. We are in Chapter 6, where I'm talking about an all-important topic, which is taking charge of our own interior culture, you know, what goes on in our own head. And uh, I quote uh, the first line of a major Buddhist text, the Dhammapada, where in Sri Ishran's translation it goes, all that we are is the result of what we have thought. In other words, if we take some control over our thought process and the content of our thoughts, we are actually controlling our destiny and to that extent influencing the destiny of others for good or for ill. And I begin, I'm on page 178, by the way, and I begin by touching on a, an issue that's very, very sore right now in the United States, and that is the issue of racial prejudice. And I'm happy to say that since the book came out, a very important study has been done by two uh, women at Princeton, uh, Mary Wheeler and Susan Fisk. And the background to this study is that if uh, we were suddenly to flash on this screen that you're looking at the face of a person from a different race, uh, you would have a fight or flight reaction coming from the midbrain, so very, very deep, you know, below the cerebral cortex in the limbic system, it would activate. Uh, so, in a, unfortunately, this means that what I was saying here about all racial prejudice just being conditioning that happens later in life, uh, it's not entirely true. It's a little bit confusing, but be that as it may, this negative reaction, fight or flight, to a different person uh, is very deep in the nervous system, in our central nervous system. And uh, these two women decided this can't be the whole story, so they set up a very clever experiment, extremely simple, to try to override it, and it worked beautifully. So what they did was the subject would sit down and instead of saying, uh, just show the face, they would say, okay, the point of this study is we want you to guess whether this person likes coffee or tea or uh, smooth peanut butter or crunchy peanut butter. And by golly, that limbic system did not fire off when they saw that face. So if you think about it for a minute, and incidentally this uh, study is called something like um, breaking up racial stereotypes or something like that. Uh, it's not hard to explain why this happens, and that is because when you get down to those individual preferences, you're thinking of the th human being that you're looking at as a person, as an individual, and not as a member of a class, not as a type. So what you're actually doing is rehumanizing that person in your own eyes. And uh, the good news is that uh, we can all do this uh, just by a matter of practice. Uh, when you see somebody, uh, no matter what your instantaneous reaction is, you can just ask yourself, I wonder what uh, kind of person that he or she is. Uh, you know, does she like this, that, the other thing? And eventually this becomes a habit. So uh, we're going to talk now for the rest of this chapter, and I'll be rejoining you shortly about how these individual efforts to um, take charge of what goes on in your own consciousness can uh, build out to an actual culture of nonviolence. So stay tuned. Look forward to continuing with you soon.